Hi everyone, thanks for watching my channel, thanks for listening to my presentations. Um, this presentation will be the third on glaucoma. And today I'll be talking about glaucoma in children, that is newborns or neonates and older children. So, glaucoma is not only the problem of the elderly, it could happen even in children. And those that are even called young adults. I will go into the different types of glaucoma that could be found in all these age groups and how those situations could be acquired. And after that, I will go into the full treatment of glaucoma generally. So to the mothers, sit back. To the fathers, sit back. To the Daycare centers, sit back. Even pediatricians, pediatric nurses, let's go. Glaucoma is a collection of focular or eye diseases that lead to optic neuropathy and visual loss or blindness. It's supposed to be a neurodegenerative condition with intraocular pressure that is raised, but not in all cases that will have raise intraocular pressure and not in all cases of raised intraocular pressure that will actually have glaucoma. When the ophthalmologists use their sophisticated equipment to check the eyeball, they're going to find the optic disc to be cupped. And when it comes to presentation, the first problem will be that the peripheral visual field will be lost. Then visual acuity will start deteriorating and blindness will set in later on. It is one of the leading causes of blindness to the elderly. Now we are considering that fact in children. The increased intraocular pressure compresses and damages the optic nerve. The transmission of impulses to the brain will be lost and will be dealing with permanent blindness in the end. It, it is mostly seen in the elderly, but can occur in the younger age groups. And go with me now. We have what is called juvenile open angle glaucoma, and that is found in childhood or early adulthood. That's what we call primary congenital glaucoma. That occurs in children before the age of five. Can you see that? And we have what is called hereditary glaucoma. In that case, it is even earlier than age of five. At best, we have that. Um, primary congenital glaucoma is one in every 10,000 birth in the Middle East, particularly. If the individual is less than 40 years old, we're going to give it a different name because of the age we call it early onset glaucoma the primary open angle glaucoma is common in the elderly trabecular mesh work and the ciliary body are expected to be regulating the intraocular pressure with the help of myocilin the fertile mutants of myocilin are detrimental because they only accumulate and block flow of fluid from the eye, leading to intraocular pressure as early onset glaucoma. Cytochrome P450 in the ocular structures may alter the secretions of fluid, and excess production can lead to increased intraocular pressure. Orosoma recessive pattern will be the way of inheritance when it is all about early onset glaucoma. But the juvenile open angle glaucoma, the inheritance here will be orosoma dominant pattern. Let me, you can pause and let me repeat this. When a child has just been given birth to and 
Now, the examination is done and glaucoma is diagnosed. Inheritance here will be autosomal recessive. But juvenile open angle glaucoma is going to have history that somebody in the family had it at this age because it is autosomal dominant pattern. Okay. In the case of autosomal recessive, that will follow Mendelian inheritance, where both the mother and the father are heterozygous for the causative gene. I mean, they inherit the allele. I mean, affected people inherit the allele from each of the parents. So, until the situation is homozygous, I mean, the gene responsible for the onset glaucoma is one from the mother, one from the father, until they both become homozygous in their offspring before they could come down with it. So the parents are both carriers. Why the affected child has inherited the abnormal genes from each of the parents. So each of the parents could not blame the other one. The difference in autosomal dominance is that one of the parents has it and has passed it down. So let them trace the history, the family. So when we are dealing with glaucoma in children, we have two ways to look at it. Is either the primary or secondary. When I mean when it comes to causes. So the primary ones, that is, we don't need to look externally anywhere. We don't need to look for any causative agents anywhere other than within the genetic constitution of the affected individual. In that case, we'll be talking about congenital glaucoma or primary infantile glaucoma or juvenile glaucoma. In case of the congenital glaucoma, the onset will be at birth. And in case of primary infantile glaucoma, it will be at childhood as the onset. The onset will be at childhood. But when it comes to juvenile open angle glaucoma, the onset will be at the adolescence or young adult stage. So you could see that there are all children, but different age groups, and we're going to find the causes to differ as well. Now I want to look into possible secondary causes of glaucoma in children. Okay, so I call this secondary glaucoma, but in all these cases that I'll be mentioning, they all have one thing in common. They have angle anomaly. Remember, from beginning, we'll talk about open angle glaucoma. We later on move to angle closure glaucoma. So it's all about that angle, okay? So all these uh, possible conditions we have angle anomaly. So that is the fundamental problem that is common to all of them. So Sturge Weber syndrome. Any child diagnosed with Sturge Weber syndrome will be at the risk of having glaucoma because of angle anomaly. Aniridia, neurofibromatosis. Sorry, I'm not going to details of each of these conditions because each is a, a, a full day lecture, you no, know, on its own. So aniridia, neurofibromatosis, trisomy 13, skeletal dysplasia, rubella, that is German measles, homocystinuria, retinopathy or prematurity, as is preterm babies having retinopathy, 
at risk of secondary glaucoma because of angle anomaly. Retinoblastoma. Any child diagnosed with retinoblastoma is at the risk of secondary glaucoma because of possible angle anomaly. Leukemia. Leukemia. And of course, trauma. Still, on secondary causes could be traumatic trabeculitis, could be steroids induced if the child had been on eye drops, or to a smaller extent if the child is on systemic corticosteroids. Still, could be at bed, acquired, or ocular anomalies. What are the clinical features here? When the cornea is viewed, it's going to be enlarged and it matters. It will be tearing. The child could be tearing more profusely. Afraid of looking at light, photophobia. Will be having a day that is those who could complain about headache that is adolescent or young adults, because I don't expect those at bed or so many infants to be able to tell they have headache. There is possibility of eye pain, visual field loss, and there could be frank blindness. And sorry to say, once it has gone to that level, it's no longer amenable to treatment. You can test your child, your baby, by checking for blinking near the eyes or directly. That's just what I thought would help. Go near the child and you know, wave something, you know, I mean, to check side views, visual field loss. Okay? If there is a family history of acute angle closure glaucoma or open angle glaucoma happening at childbirth, infancy, or adolescency, be suspicious. So do everything. Take the child to ophthalmologist. Don't worry about how much it's going to cost you right now. Get the help from social welfare or everywhere of friend, you know, your religious groups and even family friends and everybody. The reason is if you present now and the diagnosis is made by the competent ophthalmologist and his interventions are embarked upon now. You may be able to salvage the eyes. How do you make the diagnosis here? It is ophthalmologically made with positive family history, particularly juvenile open angle glaucoma with autosomal dominancy inheritance because somebody in the family had it. Now that is sure. The one with autosomal recessive, they might be looking for who had it and be tracing, you know, genealogy and ancestry line and may not be able to get on time. But autosomal dominancy is very, very likely somebody in the family will be known to the generation because it is autosomal, autosomal dominancy. How about the treatment? Surgery once it is diagnosed. And with that, I've come to the end of this very presentation. The next presentation will be treatment of glaucoma generally. Thanks for listening to my presentation. Kindly subscribe to my channel so that you can have all these presentations immediately they are published. Thank you. I appreciate it.